you're a listener of the podcast and you have not yet downloaded the Manifest It Now app, go right now to your app store and search Manifest It Now and download it. If you like manifestation and you like the things that we talk about on this podcast, you're going to absolutely love it. It is where I keep all of my manifestation resources that I personally use. We have our inner tribe community in there where you can network and collaborate with other high vibe people that are on their manifestation journey. You have my subliminal library, meditations, manifestation courses. I bring in experts every month. It's a good place to be. So if you haven't yet downloaded it, go head to the app store and download Manifest It Now. Join me on Tuesday when we do our inner tribe calls and connect with the other wonderful people in there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and dive into today's episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Law of Attraction Tribe podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Keith, and I have a co-host today, my very dear friend, Simone DeLora. Hey, Simone. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. We've only been talking about doing a podcast for like a year now. So we're finally uh, finally doing this. I know you guys probably heard our workshop that was um, last week. And we're going to dive into some things that we talk about all the time. And, and you guys have heard me kind of mention these things off and on. But it's really important because... I feel like we've we've been very conditioned, you might even think like a little bit brainwashed as a society, to just believe in this whole concept that hard work equals success. And I know we've all heard that, right? Like that's what was ingrained in us from our teachers and our parents and, you know, even things that we've watched on TV shows and uh, movies and things like that. And I feel like whenever I talk about this, people think that that means, oh, so you just sit around on the couch and everything just like falls in your lap. And it's not that at all. It's There's a different energy when you feel aligned to something where it doesn't feel hard. It doesn't feel like work. It feels like life can feel easy. Making money can feel easy. Um, friendships can feel easy. And it's just shifting that concept because we're, it's so ingrained in us that it has to feel hard and that that is what is going to get the results. And I know for myself, growing up, my dad all the time, he would say, if it were easy, everyone would do it. And it was just this concept that I picked up at a very young age that if I want to make money and live a successful, happy life, I've got to work my ass off. And I it's got to be so stressful and so hard. Otherwise, I'm going to be poor and I'm never going to make it and I'm never going to amount to anything. That was like literally what I thought as a child. And it was really sad because even in elementary school, I remember like I I worked so hard to get good grades and going into high school and stuff like when my friends were so relaxed about things and having fun, like I was always worried about my grades and getting into a good college because again, it was like this underlying concept that if I slowed down even for a second, and I enjoyed myself even for a second, it would all fall apart and I wouldn't be successful. I wouldn't get into the good college. I would fail the test. I I wouldn't amount to anything. And I even remember, like, I, I think I've told this story before, but I had this seventh grade teacher. She was a history teacher. Her name was Mrs. Brandt. And oh my gosh, I just, her voice, like I think about it and I cringe because she was just the most miserable woman ever. And she was so mean, like she was just hateful. And every single day, all throughout the class, at least three times during the lesson, she would stop and she would say, listen, folks, and she'd always call us folks, like, listen, folks, life is hard and you just need to suck it up and deal with it. And if you can't deal with this, you're never going to get through life. And it was just this constant message that like life sucks, life is hard, and you better just come to grips with that. 
and accept it because it's always going to be hard and it's never going to get better. It's just going to get worse and harder and more stressful as you go on. And that stuck with me. And I, I remember like when I went into the corporate world and it really was hard and I was really struggling, like crying every single night when I got home, I just remember thinking that like, this is life and I just have to suck it up. Like this is what I have to look forward to for the next 40 years. And this is just how it is. And I really believed that. And it was very, very depressing. And I'm like, no wonder my mental health was complete shit at that point in time, because I really fully believed that that's the only way. The only way is hard work and it's just never going to get better. It's never going to get easier. And thank God that shifted. And I eventually was like, screw this. No, like I don't, I'm not going to continue this way. And I started learning about the law of attraction and, and shifting it. But I think we all grow up with that concept in this society. Simone, I mean, I think you've gr- grown up believing the same sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I will preface this by saying I love my family. They're amazing people. Um, I'm really blessed to be a part of, uh, you know, them. Um, But, you know, I come from a family of, you know, very hardworking uh, business entrepreneurs. Um, I had, you know, an amazing role model in my father who worked you know, day and night to build his business. And um, I had that same belief where, you know, if your your work, your work ethic was what your value was and was determined how successful you could be. Um, you know, being an artist from an early age, that was really tough because you know, it was sort of like, okay, well, that's nice, but what are you going to really do with your life? (laughs) Um, Well, yeah, because we're taught that like creativity and anything like that is just a waste of time. That's not going to pay the bills, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I remember my, (laughs) my grandfather who, I mean, he was wonderful, but you know, he's totally different generation. I remember him saying to me at one point when I was in college, um, art, in art, art college, you know, he was like, well, what, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, artists, they're just, they just sit around and have fun. They're just parasites of society. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I, it was funny at the time. It's hilarious now. And I think about it because, you know, when I was in art school my god we we pop no dos to stay up for three days on end just so we could get all of our work done i mean you know yes when you're when you're in your full creative expression um and you're flowing it's it's wonderful and it's beautiful to be doing something you love but man art is not easy (laughs) i mean if anything it's probably one of the most difficult um paths to take because it really requires you to be completely open and vulnerable to making, you know, what's authentic to you. And then having the courage to make a living at it, you know, in a society that doesn't necessarily value that as a uh, successful career. And then you, you know, you add in all of the, the competition to that and, um, you know, your, your chances of making it, it's, it's, um, you know, it's a brave thing to do, I think, to, to try and make a living as an artist. Yeah, I think we all grew up hearing that phrase about like the starving artist. And what's so cool, though, is like, you really disproved that. I mean, I think you kind of started with that when I first met you, I think there, there might have been a little bit of the like, all right, I've got to worry about like, um, how much money I can really make from this. But I mean, you're doing it like you're living um, as an artist in, you know, one of the most expensive, well, probably the most expensive city in uh, the United States and you're doing great and you, you have a lot of opportunities left and right. Um, But I think, I don't think that necessarily comes from this sort of like 
masculine idea of like hard work and, and uh, strategy and, you know, doing all these different things. I think it's more feeling aligned with your work and allowing yourself to be creative and express that. Like, do you agree? Well, I want to just say, I mean, just kind of going back to your, your initial comment, you know, I, there's obviously, there's nothing wrong with hard work. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get into the college that you want to get into or, or focusing on getting good grades. I mean, that's, there's absolutely nothing wrong. That's amazing. And yes, you know, um, I, I think that, you know, for, for me personally, like, I have goals. I, I focus on them. I want to achieve them. But I think the the what maybe what the the crux of of that situation is 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 how you feel when you're approaching them. So you know, like you said, we're conditioned in what I guess is considered more sort of masculine energy, which is this aggressiveness, this competition, this um, you know sense that if you're not being super productive or you're not competing, you're not um, going after, you're not working hard, that you're not going to be successful. And that's not necessarily true because, you know, those, that can be very debilitating if, you know, you're, you're working yourself to death and you're, you're not getting the results that you want, or it's just, it's, it's not necessarily a healthy mindset to, to live by. And um, I think as it, you know, especially as it relates to creativity, um, you know, having more of, of, I guess, what we call sort of more feminine energies, especially, you know, obviously creativity is, is key in that, but this, you know, um, sense of openness and, abundance and receptivity, um, you know, tapping into your emotional depth, um, you know, that helps you flow more easily and, and, and achieve your goals, maybe with, with a better mindset, let's say, you know. No, I think you're absolutely right. And I think maybe instead of looking at it as like, hard work, you know, equals success. It was more, like you said, the feeling behind it that I felt like it had to feel hard and it had to feel like a struggle because life is a struggle. That was like the message that I got, even though I don't really think anyone like blatantly said that. It, it's just like you grow up and you see your parents, you know, struggling to get by and and you hear your teachers like, and and you just there's this idea that that's what life is and you have to get comfortable with that and and it's just what it is that's that's what i believed it was the feeling behind it and i suppose like i never realized until really just a few years ago that it could feel easy so mm -hmm. like you could be doing a lot i mean you could be taking all sorts of action and i do i mean i, I i've taken a lot of action but that you, it can feel fun and it could feel joyful and it could feel fulfilling and then it doesn't have to be a struggle. And that was the disconnect that I had most of my life up until a few years ago. And I think a lot of people um, go through the same thing just because of the way we were raised because it was a struggle for many generations. There was a lot of struggle and a lot of sacrifice and that's been passed down to us. But I think the point is it's, it doesn't have to be that way. And especially now with all the resources and things available to us, it doesn't, we don't have to live in that struggle. We can make a, sure. a decision to um, shift our energy and shift the way we feel. Yes. And yeah. And that's and really when you do that, and at least what what you and I have certainly found over the past year is that's when you you can you know that's when you do start achieving your goals more. That's when you know those connections start to magically appear, and and you're enjoying it on top of of it. You know, you're not struggling to um, find what you're looking for, you know, like you're, you're 
you're seeing things more clearly. You're seeing your path more clearly. You're, you know, you're seeing opportunities more clearly. You're attracting more opportunities. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of the, the beauty of it really is like you said, it doesn't have to be this mental struggle all the time. Yeah. I think when you let go of the struggle, you make space for the answer to show up. You know, I think the answer is there, um, right in front of us, but we get so in our mind with the stress and the struggle and what we think we should do or what we think we have to do that we might miss a very obvious answer that's like right in front of us the whole time. And when you can kind of let go of that and step into this, like you said, this flow, this creative flow, I feel like that's when I get all sorts of downloads of exactly what I should do and and everything does come into focus and seems so much more clear and the path sort of reveals itself. But the problem is for so many years, I didn't allow myself one second to slow down or pause to even get into that creative flow because, again, that creativity was deemed as like not important, you know, don't waste your time on that. Focus on strategy, not creativity. And I think we have it all backwards. I think it's the creativity and the imagination and all of those right brain things that really leads us to the most incredible life we could possibly live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So that's basically, I feel like that's basically sort of this path that we went on over the past year where, you know, we were still a little bit in that struggle in the beginning, but quickly sort of like shifted and shifted from an energetic standpoint. And so when we sat down and we were looking at it, we kind of found that there were there were sort of um, these like energetic principles that we had embodied over the course of about a year that completely shifted, I think, both of our lives in a big way, like a major way. I mean, I feel like we're different people now than we were um, when we first met. And mm -hmm. the thing is, it wasn't about action that we took or like strategy that we took. It was about becoming. It was like embodying these energetic principles and being the person we wanted to be. And then like the life and all of the things attracted because of that. But it all started with our energy and it was pretty much the opposite of what we had been raised to believe in society. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. I mean, and you know, if you just kind of think about this, I'm sure everyone's heard this saying, you know, like attracts like, um, it's just sort of a very basic energetic principle and the you know, if you kind of distill it all down to that, it's, it, you know, it's, it's kind of simple in a way. Um, but, you know, you, you embody those things first, you kind of adjust what, you know, your belief system is, and you adjust where your energy is. And then, um, you know, as, as we found, it's, it's, it's pretty magical, you know, things, you know, you do make those connections, you do find those opportunities, um, you raise your income, you raise the number of clients you have, you, you know, I mean, for me, this is what, what happened. Um, you know, new work opportunities, new exhibition opportunities, new um, commissions, all of those things just start to come through. And it's not that it's not that they aren't worked for. It's not that, you know, you sit back on, like you said, on the couch and these things just magically appear. I mean, um, you're, you're co-creating. So you, obviously you have to do your part, but um, it's not as much of, of a mental struggle. And even when things don't happen the way you necessarily want them to, you've got, you've got better tools to deal with that you know you've got you've got a better system of like okay well you know what else is there then what what's next yeah 
Yeah. And you always have an answer. It's like, I feel like every day we're texting each other of like, you're never going to believe, you're never going to believe what just happened. <laughs> and it's literally like that every day. I mean, it really does feel like magic because you're just constantly surprised. And I always like am telling myself the universe loves to delight me. And I know we always joke around about that too. And like, we get these funny signs constantly and you're just led down this incredible path that I think is available to everyone always. We're just so closed off to it because we've never really been taught that there's this other way. And so that's what we're now trying to teach everyone is that, you know, through these eight principles, you, you know, you become a, a different person. You're still you, but it's like a version of yourself. Where th aligned. Yeah. Yeah. You're energetically aligned and things just happen for you. And I'm, I'm sure everyone's seen on social media, like the lucky girl syndrome where like, you're just lucky, but that's literally how I feel now that, that I'm just so lucky and things always happen for me. But it's because over the, over the course of the year, I was able to shift energetically on such a deep level and have so much trust and faith and believe, belief in myself and my goals and in the universe supporting me that it's like, Things have no choice but to manifest. And I just feel like that's the way it is now. And it can be that way for everyone. You just have to um, shift some of those things and let go of some of those concepts we grew up with and just see this other way. And so that's really what we're we're laying out for everyone in this program that we developed. And um, I'm going to link in the show notes. We We did a workshop, so we have that. And uh, you can go and check that out and just sort of see what we're talking about. And if you feel called to, you know, try something different, maybe you're in a nine to five job where you are struggling or you're in a relationship with where you're struggling or you just feel like life feels hard and I'm so tired of being uh, stressed out and I'm so tired of the constant struggle if that's where you're at, then this is for you. Like this is where I'm I'm telling you absolutely there's another way and it doesn't have to be hard and you don't have to struggle. And we want to guide you through that process because we've both been there and we've both had those, you know, dark moments where it feels like everything's falling apart and it's never going to get better, but it does. It can get better and uh, we've sort of figured out all of our little rituals and things that we we do to make life magical and joyful and fun. We're sharing all of those because it can be that way. It gets to be that way. You just have to believe it and open yourself up to it. And that's what we want to help you do. So anyhow, I will link that in the show notes. And you guys know you can always reach out if you have questions on that. Um and we'll see you back here in a few days for the next episode. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you got something out of this podcast, then pay it forward by sharing it with a friend. This is the best way that you can support the podcast and spread good vibes. And if you're left thinking that you want more, you want to keep listening, then download the Manifest It Now app and subscribe so you can become a member of the Inner Tribe where we meet on Zoom twice a week and you have live workshops every other week by guest experts and you get to meet with a high vibe community and keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you back here next time.